Lens flare is everywhere. It glows on our supermen, near our iron men, and around our method-acted oil men. It's in the fifth dimension, the final frontier, and definitely the fictional town of Lillian, Ohio. The lens flare is a technical phenomenon and distinct sensibility that's taken over. Lens flares can get pretty complicated. There are countless lenses from the past century of filmmaking, not to mention the physics involved. But a movie fan can identify flare pretty quickly. The basics are that each lens has a bunch of parts, and when bright light shines at the right intensity or angle, it can bounce around in those parts. That bouncing produces a bright haze as well as lens flare. The flare's shape depends on how diaphragm blades, these things, close to create the aperture, which is where the light gets in. If they have fewer blades, you might get a hexagon-shaped flare. More blades and it'll be closer to a circle. Anamorphic lenses have a different flare. They were designed with an oval shape to squish more information onto a piece of 35 millimeter film. When they're projected out with another lens, it's in a wider format. And all that makes lens flares that can be like stripes of light across the picture. But these flares weren't always so trendy. For decades, cinematographers fought to hide them. When Greg Tolan shot Citizen Kane, he and director Orson Welles innovated constantly. Famously, they used deep focus to show a lot of stuff clearly and at the same time. They increased the depth of field by making the aperture tiny and using really, really bright lights. So Toland coated his lenses with Vard Opticoat to reduce glare and lens flare from all that light, and it set a norm and a path for innovation. Lenses were constantly coated with new and better technologies that helped keep light from bouncing around and creating flare. It also set an expectation. To make an immersive, professional movie Movie, you did not have flair, until a revolution in movie making changed it. In the 1960s, new filmmakers wanted to show their movies weren't made in a box. They turned to flair to capture a documentary-like look. Legendary cinematographer Conrad L. Hall's work in Cool Hand Luke was a rebellion that turned into a movement. He even talked about it in 1992's Vision of Light, The Art of Cinematography. I feel particularly involved in helping make mistakes uh, acceptable. If the light shone in the lens and flared the lens, that was considered uh, a mistake. That would somebody would report that the operator would report. Up, oh, the sun hit the lens. It flared the lens. It uh, uh, cut. He showed the heat of chain gain life by keeping in the flare, and that quickly spread to rebel movies like The Graduate and Easy Rider. They symbolized authenticity, and as a result, lens flares did too. Just as Flair helped sell the reality of characters, it could sell a sense of wonder. Flair spread really quickly, like in 1968's Planet of the Apes. You maniacs! And later, Steven Spielberg brought it into Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Flair had entered the sci-fi and action canon. If early Flair said, these feelings are real, now it could say, these spacemen and explosions are real too. And though J.J. Abrams gets slammed for his gratuitous lens flare use, its use as a tool of realism and wonder has impressed everyone from schlock jocks like Michael Bay to true artists, from Sofia Coppola to Terrence Malick. Malick can't get enough. It's in video games, political logos, and maybe your phone's weather screen. Movies in the 60s had to prove they weren't made in this box, and in the 90s, they used lens flare to try to prove they weren't made in this one, even though flares become available with just a few clicks. Lens flare used to be a mistake you tried to avoid. Now, it's a choice you can't escape. So you've seen a lot of computer-generated lens flare today, but all of this stuff is actually legitimate. However, to get it to show up reliably, I had to place a light really close to the camera. That's because modern lenses have a protective coating that's pretty good at stopping flare. It's also the reason that cinematographers on movies like There Will Be Blood and Saving Private Ryan have actually stripped away that coating just so that they can get the old school flare look.